Yes, mashallah. It's very nice, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to our Friday night uh, program for tonight. We're going to get started because the time is limited. As you all know, Isha is at 10.05. So let me give you a quick rundown. We're going to start right now. And we will, inshallah, try to wrap up the program in roughly 45 minutes. At that time, I'll ask the volunteers to start setting up for dinner. But the Q&A can keep going on while the dinner is being set up in the back. So give us a little bit of extra time for Q&A, inshallah. Um, sisters, uh, if you're downstairs, if you can't hear, please, um, we'll send somebody down uh, to make sure you can hear. Let us know or text us. Um, and if the, if the TV is not on or anything is not um, up to par, let us know, inshallah. And you can text us as well. If Sister Nima is downstairs, you can text us. So tonight's program, alhamdulillah, we're excited. You all have heard over the last week or so, one to two weeks, that we have um, secured Imam Jawad as our religious director. And he is onboarding now, and tonight's a formal night for you all to meet him formally. Many of you know him. Um, he's no stranger to this community. But tonight's a little bit of a night for those of you that might not know him, to get a chance to know him a little bit better. And then ultimately tonight you'll be able to have an opportunity to ask more questions of the whole panel for Imam Jawad, as well as our new Imam, Imam Ali. Um, and we have, of course, Qarita Fakat, who's always a pillar of our community. Um, we will have Imam Jawad introduce himself for a few minutes, just for those that might not know him. And then we'll do a panel-style discussion on unity in diversity, where we'll hear from all of the Imams on the importance of unity in our community. And we'll have a Q&A-style panel on what, what we need to do in our community, how we can improve ourselves, how, and how we can move forward, inshallah. So I'm going to hand it over to Imam Jawad now to give a brief introduction of himself, inshallah. Many of the senior veterans, they know me very well. I was one of the first imam in this masjid when you were not here. When many of you were not here back in 2007 or 8 uh, when we first started the building and I was given Friday night halakhas and Friday khutbah over here and then I had to leave in 2009 to Pakistan when I came back in 2017 to um, America. I graduated from International Islamic University in Islamabad um, with the famous you know, Faisal Mosque if you've seen it in Islamabad and in 2000 and then I came to America, I was in, uh, in California for a year. In New Jersey I've been here since 2001 until 2009 and then came back in 2017. When I was here in 2001, I was in uh, Teaneck. I was the religious director in Darul Islam in Teaneck. It's a famous masjid, you've seen it. It's on the turnpike uh, just before GW Bridge. For almost eight years I was there and also I was the um, religious director at Al Ghazali Islamic High School in Teaneck. And um, throughout that time, I used to also travel around and most of these massages like uh, people in MCMC or ICJ and other places in Bhutan know me because I've been traveling throughout that time between 2001 and 2009. Um, recently, I was in uh, Hackettstown, Islamic Society of North Jersey, and now coming back to the, where we started the journey, being here. It's an honor and privilege to be part of this community again. Uh, many of you have moved here uh, after 2009, which it is a good community. And being a religious director here, inshallah, my vision and goal, you know, along with uh, Qari Saab and, you know, and Imam Ali, who has recently joined, and also Sheikh Kamal, is to build programs and activities here. You know, Qari Rafaq al Mashal is one of the pioneers. He's been teaching the community kids well before even when the building, physical building was not there. So he's a pillar of this community also. Uh, me and him go a long ways back since that time in 2001. We've been together. So alhamdulillah, we'll have programs for sisters, we'll have programs for brothers, we'll have classes, uh, we'll try to have workshops. And 
of course, our benchmark is this Friday night halakha. I remember doing this halakha. I used to live in Tinek at that time and drive all the way down here uh, to do the Friday night halakha, which was the cornerstone and bedrock of this community coming together. I see a lot of new faces, new people have moved in, many young couples with young kids have moved in. We we'll try to arrange programs um, for young kids. Uh, one of the goals I have is the goal of uh, MCNJ in Vision 2025 is to establish and start a HIPS program. And inshallah, we are, um, we are fortunate to have Qadi Saab who has taught the kids here. He's, he's a gem and a jewel. And inshallah, we'll try to plan something to start a full-time health program in MCNJ along with uh, Imam Ali here and Qadi Rafaqab to be able to cater to our community. As many other masajid have their health program, why shouldn't we have? We should have it too. And besides that, we can have many educational programs, you know, classes on tafsir, on hadith, ulum al-Quran, ulum al-Hadith, uh, workshops. We can have also sisters programs, sisters only halaqa and sessions where they can ask questions and also listen to different topics from the imams and shaykh that are there on, on board and with us together. Um, besides that, we would love to start some kind of uh, education program for the younger kids, especially those who are between ages 5 and 12. You know, we should have some kind of a special program, a family program for them in terms of where they can benefit, inshallah, from uh, general knowledge quiz. Uh, one thing that is very popular with that age group of 5 to 12 is having Islamic knowledge uh, kind of Jeopardy style pop quiz where they answer questions and they get some reward, some benefit and that motivates and inspires them to further go inshallah. And besides that you can also suggest various things that you would like to have. Um, if there are people who would like to have uh, sessions or programs in a specific language, we can think about that and plan that also because, you know, the, the unity in diversity means that our diverse backgrounds, our diverse cultures should not divide us but rather unite us. But the diversity also benefits us in the sense that there are certain information sharing that is very beautiful and serene in a specific language. I'll give you an example. I mean, I speak Arabic fluently because I graduated from Islamic University. I lived in Kuwait from my childhood, so I know Arabic. And I know the Arab brothers or sisters would love to listen to halaqa, it does in Arabic. Uh, and, and the beauty of that is that the language itself gives a lot of information when you're talking in that language. Likewise, there are a lot of people from Asian background, ethnicity, and sometimes it is good to have a halaqa or dars in Urdu language because the language itself uh, makes it easier for people to understand. And those who are Urdu speaking or Arabic speaking in those specific durus would benefit from that congeniality and bonding and networking. And of course, we can have translations if anyone wants to join those programs for that matter in order to benefit from that. Uh, but English, of course, is the general language. There's no harm in having other language programs so long as that brings people closer to the Muslim and builds in there because we have a plethora of knowledge, information in just the Arabic language itself or the Urdu language which benefits people. Besides that, we would like to develop the community and develop the center for our neighbors, you know, be able to have a beacon of light in terms of inviting non-Muslims, having more open houses here. Uh, when we say open house, I don't mean interfaith dialogue, bringing people from church. That is a separate thing. We can have that. But open house means that you, we try to somehow uh, motivate, inspire the neighbors around us and bring them once in a while to the masjid, share with them and with, our, with our Islam or with uh, befriend them, connect with them, so that we have a healthy, good relationship in the environment. The message should be a beacon of light for that city, for that locality and neighborhood where it is functioning. And of course, that means that we need to build relationships with the elected officials, with the mayors or freeholders or the council members, etc., you know, police chief, fire chief, etc., because that builds a relationship such of a house of worship where the, where the masjid exists, the local township is well connected and able to see the benefits of the Muslim community, the Muslim American citizens in the society, so that they are able to benefit from that. Because these people, they 
we require our votes, and of course, with them coming into the system, that would also make them to benefit us by helping us in various different facilitations, whether it's building approvals or permits and things like that. And of course, it, uh, Interfaith itself is an opportunity where a lot of churches and temples around in this area that will really benefit if we have some kind of uh, program with them in terms of interconnectivity. So when we talk about unity and diversity is that, you know, you have people from diverse backgrounds, you have shuyu from different backgrounds, you know, whether somebody uh, raises their hand, uh, you know, or not, or whether somebody says Amin loudly or not, whether somebody says Maliki Umiddin or Maliki Umiddin, I love that, and I like to listen to this Qarat al Warsh. You know, a lot of times, you know, we Pakistanis, we get very, very offended when we hear it's Quran being said in a very different way. But this is the beauty of Islam, this is the diversity of Islam. Allah SWT revealed the Quran on our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in many different Qarat. Sabah Qiraat, Ashra Qiraat, you know, Ihdashir, Eleven Qiraat. And because we're so much, you know, um, you know, com uh, what you can say, we are so much, you know, um, self-centered that we only adhere to what we grew up with. If I grew up back home in our country in a certain school of thought, we're so self-centered to that that we don't accept other uh, opportunities that come around us. But that is the unity and diversity that we should facilitate, we should have the flexibility that we pray together, we eat together, we live together, we communicate together, despite the different diverse cultures and backgrounds that we may have. And the bottom line of unity and diversity is rahma. We have to have rahma, mercy. We should not get offended immediately the moment we see somebody praying differently, somebody doing something differently, somebody practicing something differently. That should not at all irritate or cause discomfort. You know, this is the beauty of the Sahaba that they followed Muhammad Sallam and whatever Sahabi uh, secured something from direct seeing of Rasul Sallam that transferred to the next generation, next generation. You know, if you learn in education, the tadwin al-fiqh, the compilation of fiqh, the evolution of fiqh, how did it come? How do we even have these four schools of thought? You know, if you look at it, Rasulullah was neither a Hanafi, nor a Maliki, nor a Shafi, nor a Hanbali, nor a Salafi. Rasulullah was Rasulullah. You know, he was Muhammad Sallam. He is like the river from which the tributaries come. It is for our benefit that Allah ordained upon this ummah that over these hundreds and hundred years that fiqh was tadween compiled so that it can be followed according to those guidelines. But remember, the root source of all these schools of thought is the hadith and sunnah of Muhammad Sallam. So the moment we see somebody practicing Islam a little bit different from what we are used to, that should give us the vastness, the expansion, the expression that this is my Muslim brother or sister from a different area and from different background and I, sh I should embrace that, I should hug that, I should feel connected with that. Not that we immediately jump the gun and start saying that, oh, you prayed wrong, or you did this wrong, you did that wrong. Remember that famous incident when Umar ibn Khattab, he grabbed his sahabi and dragged him to Prophet Zillam and said, you know, so Zillam, he's reading, reciting Quran wrong. So Rasulullah said, Mahlan, Mahlan, Ya Ibn Khattab, you know, slow down, calm down, slow down, O son of Khattab, you know, leave him alone because he was grabbing him by the shirt and he dragged him over there. You know how Ibn Khattab was very, very, you know, very uh, temperamental. So Rasulullah said, leave him alone, let him recite. He listened. And he said, yes, this is how Quran was revealed to me. And that was the first time Umar Ibn Khattab heard Quran listening from that way. Because he listened to Rasulullah from a different way, and he was deciding that. So whether you say Maliki Umiddin or Maliki Umiddin, whether you have Imala or no Imala, these are the Qur'aat that our Rasulullah brought. And the beauty of the Quraysh, the love of the Quraysh is that the diversity brings the unity. It united the Ummah. It united the different factions and tribes of Quraysh. Why cannot it reunite the different Muslim countries? You know, the reason is that we have been and I, I end with this, we have been um, slaves of colonization. We were never divided as an ummah. We were always one ummah. We were always one, one group, one country.
You see these different boundaries that you see on the map today? This was never ever there. This was after the Istamal al Gharbi, you know, the Western colonization. They came, they just picked up a pencil. You, know, you can do a Google search, Sykes Pico and all those different uh, agreements that they had when the British and the French sat together on a map and said, okay, let's butcher this whole Arab land. And who's going to take what? Literally, he just took a pencil and he drew a line like this. Have you ever seen Iraq? Have you ever seen Syria, their borders? It's literally like a small five-year-old kid playing with a pencil on a piece of paper. That's how they made the border. You know, Sykes and Pico, they were two individuals from British Empire and the French Empire. They said, look, you take some, we take some. Here's a pencil. Let's divide the line. This is Iraq. This is Syria. You get this. We get this. We get that. This is Pakistan. This is India. This is Bangladesh. It was well, you know, the Muslims ruled in South Asian continent for 800 years. Muslims ruled that. It was all one land. But then what happened was they divided us, they butchered us, they bifurcated us. And because of those boundaries, we are now mentally so bifurcated. We are mentally divided. We feel like, oh, this is Syrian Muslim, this is Arab Muslim, this is Egyptian Muslim, this is Pakistani Muslim. We were all one. We didn't even have a passport. We didn't even need visas. A Muslim could travel from Ceylon, Sri Lanka, all the way to Ankara, or all the way to Rabat from Sri Lanka, Ceylon to Rabat, you could travel alone on a horse, on a, on a camel, without any borders, without any passport, without any visa. Just like you travel from New Jersey all the way to San Francisco. Does anybody stop you on the way? No. They call it United States of America. We used to have United States of Islam, USI. We had a long time ago. But because we are a generation, we generation, I mean those who were born in the 40s and 50s and 60s and 70s, we are a generation that grew up to see that we have been divided for a reason and a purpose. But inshallah, now is the time to reunite us, bring that ummah back again, and inshallah, we'll start right here from our own masjid. Because I gave the khutbah today, many of you have listened today, and I mentioned that my vision and philosophy is that MCNJ is not an Arab masjid, it's not a Pakistani masjid, it's not a Palestinian masjid, it's not an Indian masjid or Bengali masjid. This is a masjid, it's a Muslim masjid, it's a house of Allah, has a baytullah. Well, Baytullah, the house of Allah, has no denomination, no labeling. You know, many times you go around America and people say, you go to a new city, a new place, you say, okay, I want to pray, which masjid should pray? They say, oh, go to the Bengali masjid, go to the Arab masjid, go to the Egyptian masjid, go to the Palestinian masjid. In a new city, new area, you're not local, you go there. People are so programmed and brainwashed that they label the masjid according to the ethnicity of the people who are predominantly in that masjid. We don't want that. Is the Kaaba, is Mecca modified as a Arab Kaaba, Ajam Kaaba, is it a Pakistani Kaaba, Indian Kaaba, is it Egyptian Kaaba, Saudi Kaaba, Qatari Kaaba? Kaaba, Baytullah or Haram. It's the house of Allah, the honor and respectable. We want to make MCNJ, Baytullah, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. If any, if any of you hear anybody saying, is this a Pakistani masjid? Immediately correct them and say, no, this is a house of Allah. This is Baytullah. It's a masjid, a Muslim masjid. Like the ayah says in the Quran, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijan lil nas ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhaw al munkar. You are the best of nations created for mankind. You enjoy what is good and you forbid the evil. Evil is division. Evil is divisiveness. Evil is bifurcation. The moment you hear that, stop it right there. Nip the bud right there and say, no brother, no sister, you're wrong. And that is how, that's the first part. And I know my time is up. In the future sessions and Friday nights, I'll talk about how we can build a community. How we can build an ummah. How we can build this ukhuwa, brotherhood and sisterhood. How we can make each other feel comfortable that there is no friction amongst the different ethnicities and the diversity unites us and brings us more closer from heart to heart. Jazakallah khair. Takbir. I don't know if you all are excited, but I am. And I'm going to tell Imam Jawad this is being recorded. So all of those awesome programs that he said and, and promises, we're going to hold you to it, inshallah. <laughs> so um, I, I failed to mention that uh, Imam Kamal is not here, if you've seen. Um, he is not feeling well, and he had a family issue that he's dealing with. And so we miss him here today, but I, I wanted to mention that to you.
Um, so I'm going to change it now. Oh, this thing really fluctuates. <laughs> so I'm going to change the, um, the the order of the questions a little bit, and I'm going to ask Imam Jawad to translate if needed for um, Qadir Rafaqat. But I'd like to ask Qadir Rafaqat the question. Um, Qadir, you have served the community for many, many years now, and you have also been a part of many other communities, not only in this country, but outside of this country. And we want to hear from you on what are one or two strengths you feel of this community, and then more importantly, what are one or two areas of improvement you think that we can make moving forward, inshallah. أحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنسى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعرفوا إن أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير استقوا الله العظيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ایک سٹوڈنٹ کی حیثیت سے یہاں بیٹھا ہوں ماشاء اللہ شیخ بیٹھے ان کے ساتھ پہلے بھی میں نے شیخ سے کہا کہ مادر چاہتا ہوں کہ آپ کے ساتھ بیٹھا ہوں سیکھنے کے لیے نہ کہ سکھانے کے لیے تو مادر آمدہ صاحب نے پوچھا کہ یہاں آپ اتنے عرصے سے یہاں رہ رہے ہیں اور اس کمیونٹی میں کیا اچھی چیزیں دیکھیں ماشاءاللہ ماشاءاللہ میں تقریباً یہاں بیس سے بائیس سال مجھے یو ایس میں ہو گئے اور میری جو تحفیظ حفظ کی جاب تھی آپ نے آپ کو ڈیوائیڈ کیا ہوا تھا ہاف ڈے میں وہاں ایم سی ایم سی جو تحفیظ پروگرام ہے نور اکیڈمی کا وہاں میں فل ٹائم وہاں زہر تک ہوتا تھا اور زہر کے بعد ہے یہاں ایم سی این جے مسجد تو نہیں ہوتی تھی بلکہ ایم سی این جے آرگا آدیشن ہے تھی اور اس کے جو شروع میں جن کو میں جو جن سے میری دوستی تھی برادر زید نومانی صاحب اللہ تعالیٰ ان کو سیتے کامل آج لاتا فرمائے میں یہاں شام میں یہاں کے بچوں کو مسجد تو نہیں ہوتی تھی تو کبھی کسی بیسمنٹ میں بیس پچیس بچے پڑھ رہے ہیں کبھی کسی بیسمنٹ میں ایک گھنٹہ ایک جگہ ایک دوسری گھنٹہ دوسری گھنٹہ دوسری جگہ ہم پڑھاتے تھے اور جب یہاں ماشاءاللہ ترابی کا ٹائم ہوتا تھا تو ام سی انجے ارینج کرتے تھے کبھی کارپیڈ سیٹی میں کبھی شیزان ہوتل میں تو ماشاءاللہ بہت بہترین کمیونٹی ہے یہ اور جتنا محبت اور جتنا رسپیکٹ مجھے یہاں ملی میں سوچ نہیں سکتا یہی میں اپنے جو ماشاءاللہ نہیں وہ امام ہیں امام جواد صاحب اور امام علی ان سے میں کہتا ہوں امام جواد صاحب تو یہاں اس کمیونٹ سے واقف ہیں پہلے امام بھی رہے ہیں اور ان کے پروگرام بھی ہوتے رہے ہیں ماشاءاللہ اس کمیونٹی میں یہ ہے کہ ہمیں یہ ورک کرنا ہے کہ ان کو کیسے یونائٹ کریں کیسے مسجد میں لے کے آئیں اور کیسے شوق دے لائیں بہترین قسم کمیونٹی ہے اور اس کا میں نے یہ دیکھا ہے اور سب جو بھی حضرات میں ہیں ان کو ان سے میں کہہ رہا ہوں پرانے حضرات جتنے تو ان تو جانتے ہی ہیں رمضان میں دیکھیں آپ نے تو ولنٹیر جو ہیں یہاں کے ماشاءاللہ جتنی تعریف کی جائے کم ہے وہ صبح سے شام تک ان کو یہاں کھڑا کریں وہ بے لوس خدمت کریں گے اور خدمت کرتے رہیں اور ماشاءاللہ عید ہو کوئی اور فنکشن ہو رمضان ہو لیلت القدر کی رات میں جو ہمارا فنکشن ہوتا ہے اس میں خدمت ہو جو ایم سی انجے کی جو ولنٹیر ٹیم ہے ماشاءاللہ میزی میں ان کے لیے دعا گو ہوں اللہ تعالیٰ مزید ان کو ترقیان دے اور دوسرا کوشن کیا تھا آپ کا امپرومنٹ امپرومنٹ کسی ہی جائے دیکھیں آلویز حل کوئی بھی یہ نہیں کہہ سکتا کہ میں پرفیکٹ ہوں اور مجھے امپرومنٹ کی ضرورت نہیں ہے ایون اگر بڑے بڑے اب شیو کے باس پہ چلے جائیں تو وہ یہی کہتے تھے میں کہتے ہیں علماء کے سوال بیٹھوں کہتے ہیں کہ بھئی ہم آج بھی کچھ چیز مسئلہ پوچھنا ہوتا تھا اپنے بڑے شیو سے پوچھتے ہیں وہ لکھ لیتے ہیں لکھے اس کو یاد کرتے ہیں اور اپنے آپ کو اس کو امپرو کرتے ہیں کوئی بھی یہ نہیں کہہ سکتا کہ میں شیخ ہوں اور مجھے امپرومنٹ کی ضرورت نہیں ہے یا میں کسی بھی شعبے میں ہوں 
مجھے امپروومنٹ کی ضرورت ہے ہر وقت امپروومنٹ کی ضرورت ہوتی ہے ہمیں سب سے بڑی امپروومنٹ کی ہاں ضرورت یہ ہے کہ آج وہ جو دیکھ رہے ہیں مسجد میں یہ بری ہونی چاہیے نیچے بھی اوپر بھی گھر بھی بھرا ہونا چاہیے اور یہ ہماری کمزوری ہے کسی ایک کے لیے ہم سب کی کہ ہم جو آ رہے ہیں مسجد میں ہماری یہ ذمہ داری بنتی ہے کہ ہم دس اور کو لے کے آئیں اگر کسی کے پاس کار نہیں ہے اس کو کہیں بھائی میں برادر میں آپ کو پک کروں گا مسجد میں آج پروگرام ہو رہا ہے آج چلتے ہیں ایم سی این جے میں چلتے ہیں اب ایم سی این جے کے جو جو ذمہ دار ہیں ان کا یہ فرائض میں سے ہیں ماشاءاللہ کر بھی رہے ہیں اللہ مزید امپروومنٹ کی توفیق دے کہ یہاں اتنے اچھے اچھے پروگرام ہوں کہ نوجوان آئیں بزرگوں کے پروگرام ہوں لیڈیز کے پروگرام ہوں اور اس طرح کے پروگرام ہوں کہ جس کے لیے لوگ انتظار کریں اس طرح کے ہوں کہاں کمی ہو رہی ہے اس کے لیے محاسبہ تو ہر انسان کا ضروری ہے کہ جب آدمی علماء یہ کہتے ہیں کہ رات کو جب آپ لیٹنے سے پہلے آپ نے محاسبہ کریں کہ آج دن میں ہم نے کیا اچیو کیا اور کیا ہم نے لوز کیا کیا ہمیں ضرورت ہے اس کی تو ایز اے آرگنائزیشن یا ایز اے کمیونٹی ہمیں جو ذمہ دار ہیں ان کو یہ چاہیے کہ کہاں کیا کمی ہے تو کیسے ہم کمیونٹی کو مسجد میں لائیں تو انشاءاللہ صرف مجلس شورا یا انتظام یعنی یہاں بیٹھنے والا ہر انسان مجھ سمیت ہم سب کا فرض بنتا ہے کہ ہم کمیونٹی کو لانے میں اپنا گردار ادا کریں اور ان حضرات کا یہ کام ہے کہ اچھے پروگرام انشاءاللہ تو ماشاءاللہ شیخ جواد آگئے ہیں جواد صاحب آگئے ہیں اور ان کے ماشاءاللہ بڑا تجربہ بھی ہے بڑی خدمات بھی ہے دین کی پاکستان میں یہاں بھی اکنا میں بھی کام کرتے ہیں جہاں بھی دیکھیں ماشاءاللہ شیخ جواد صاحب وہاں ہوتے ہیں اور اپنے خدمات دے رہے ہیں ماشاءاللہ اللہ تعالیٰ ان کی صحت اور عمر مبرکت عطا فرمائے اور زیادہ سے زیادہ ہماری کمیونٹی کو فائدہ پسندنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائے اور میں جو ہے ایک سٹوڈنٹ کی حصے سے جو میری میرے لیے کمیونٹی کی جو میری ضرورت ہے میں ہمیشہ 24-7 حاضر ہوں انشاءاللہ زاکم اللہ خیر ہوں اللہ اکبر I'll try to uh, summarize it. Inshallah, the Sheikh started off, uh, Qadi Sahib, saying that he has been serving this community from 22 years, mashallah, a very long time. That's more than two decades. You know, uh, uh, that's a big amount of service that he has done to this community. He said that I've been doing the TIF, the HIS program, Tahfiz program at MCMC, and Noor Academy in the early days. And then he used to come here when this building didn't exist, but there were brothers in their basement, and he mentioned specifically brother Zahid Mamani. Many of you may not know him because he's moved to Texas. Uh, he made dua for him also because he's very sick. So we make dua for him that Allah give him a cure and remedy and have healthy life inshallah. So he used to do the Hibs program for the kids over here in different basements of people until the building came in and then he would be doing it over here. So he has served the community here and in Anu together for the, all these years. He's been part of the community and uh, he also mentioned that one of the aspects of the masjid itself is the different programs. He said we should have programs for the adults, for the ladies, for the kids. And programs should be such that people are waiting in anxiety for it. They're waiting that when it will come. Uh, he mentioned that this masjid should be full. Uh, you, you see around their empty spaces. He mentioned that not just the masjid should be full, downstairs should be full, the next building should be full. Uh, it should be a vibrant, dynamic community where people are coming from different backgrounds and participating. He mentioned about Ramadan and, tar and Tarawih and Iftar and how the volunteers, he praised the volunteers that they do a very, very tireless job. They are very dedicated, devoted. You know, he, he made dua for them also that without the volunteers, we cannot have uh, the programs and the different activities happening over here. They're like the backbone of the community itself. And that is why he, he mentioned that the different diversity of this community is the benefit that people have been coming here for all these you know, years over here in 22 years. And for future, he said that we need to bring 10 people more in. If we are coming to the masjid, we should ask someone you know, that come on, come to the masjid. Uh, he mentioned even if somebody doesn't 
children have a car, we should offer them the ride to bring them here. And that is how you build a community, you uh, promote the activities of the masjid amongst your circles, you try to fill up. Because he said it's not just a job or a duty or of the masjid ashura or the management to invite people, but we as community members, it is our responsibility and burden also to bring the people to the masjid, to engage in them and also participate and volunteer and come forward uh, and volunteer in the programs and participate so that there is a very um, uh, connecting and bonding and networking kind of atmosphere and ambience in the masjid itself so that people feel the warmth of brotherhood and connectivity with each other inshallah and he said that he is always available as a, uh, to serve the masjid as he has been serving the last 22 years and he is always available for any kind of work 24 7 in the future of the masjid for developing any further inshallah takbir jazakumullah khairan qari rafaqat and as i told imam jawad we're recording this so you have offered to continue with us so we're going to expect you to continue with us inshallah i'm going to now switch it over and i'd like to ask um, imam ali many of you have heard from imam ali a couple of weeks ago in his program um, but i'd like to ask a question to both Imam Ali and Imam Jawad, what are you most excited about in coming to MCNJ? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Let's begin first with making dua for all of those who could not be here with us. May Allah Azza wa Jal take care of their affairs. Cure them of any illnesses that they may have. Sheikh Kamal, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring ease to him and his family and make his affairs easy. And for all of those who are in our audience today and who have needs, may Allah take care of their needs and put ease and sakina in all of our hearts. Allahumma ameen. Alhamdulillah. I mean, honestly, uh, uh, I, I'm just very excited to, to be working with youth. I think that's, um, alhamdulillah, that's, uh, that's been my bread and butter for so long, and it's been my focus, and it's, it is my, the purpose behind exactly why I, I started to work in da'wah, and uh, what continues to, to push me. It's because I know that, you know, sitting here, it's a, it's honestly, it's a rahmah, and it's an honor from Allah. And, yani, if Allah gave me this opportunity, that I must be grateful to Him, and put every single effort in providing that back and paying it forward so that the next generation understands that there's a pathway. I think growing up, one of the struggles really was actually trying to um, uh, enter into da'wah. It was actually seen a little bit as kind of like a, um, a dark track. Something that wasn't really encouraged. Like, you know, your parents, they really want you. Because parents are good. They want you to be... Uh, my dad's here, so I'm not, I'm not trying to get in trouble. <laughs> but your parents want you to be okay. Financially, they want you to grow up to be a doctor, an engineer, so you have an easy life. Because they see the work of an imam as very challenging, as very um, complicated, as uh, it's not always simple, well, the, pa the path that is in front of you, even for da'wah, when, when politics gets, uh, gets very high, the first people to go are the, are the people to do da'wah. Right? The, the people from, from religion are the first people to get, you know, whatever, whatever it is in any revolution or what happens. They're always the ones in trouble first. And so it's often a cause for, for worry. Additionally, you never see an imam really driving around in a Mercedes Benz, right? You don't see him in a BMW or in a, a, an eight bedroom house and a beautiful pool. And you usually see an imam humble Usually he wears the same three or four thobes every single day. And maybe he lives in, mashallah, alhamdulillah, a nice house across the street or in the area. Something small and modest, which is a beautiful life. But we don't encourage our children enough to take this path of, of studying Islam. When we came here, we came with the, with the purpose of, of working, with the purpose of, of, of getting an income and sending it back home to our families. Then we realized as we got more into this life here in America, oh, we need a masjid, oh, we need a Sunday school, we need to educate our children, we need to establish homes. And so we started to establish communities indirectly. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now has given us the opportunity to raise what is essentially our first American Muslim generation. And as somebody who unfortunately found out that they're from Gen Z, it was the biggest shock of my life. I thought I was a millennial. And when I found out I was Gen Z, I was kind of freaked out. So I, I missed the cutoff by one month, which is, very, which is very interesting. But this Generation Z, 
that they keep putting on the news. They're dealing with issues that we haven't seen really before. And they're dealing with questions and even an economic situation that, they're not, that, that is going to be way more challenging than it was in 2008. There are a lot of things that are heading towards us. It's like a wave that's coming. We all see the wave. But what are we doing about protecting ourselves and preventing ourselves from getting washed away? And so, what I'm most excited about is being a part of, I guess, the evacuation team from this wave, being somebody who can help people navigate what this wave is and how exactly are we going to be able to overcome this challenge. And may Allah Azza wa give us tawfiq. I mean, this is, there's nothing that I can do without Allah Azza wa will. Without Allah Azza wa favor for us and His love and His care for us. And so what I do is an extension of what Allah Azza wa wants. So may Allah Azza wa give us tawfiq, blesses it, and gives me the strength and all of us the strength to be able to continue to work together and to be a unified community. Barakallahu feekum. Takbir. I just wanted to emphasize um, what uh, Imam Ali spoke about, the, the importance of the, the youth. Just three data points I want to give you. I came from the Ikna Convention as well. Uh, I saw Imam Jawad there, attended some excellent sessions. Hopefully can, we can talk about some of those. Um, one of the most sad things I heard there from one of the communities, you all may remember another former Imam of ours, Imam Asif. Um, he was there and I was attending a lecture and he said, told everyone in a youth lecture that seven people from his community, seven people from the community became agnostic, seven youth became agnostic, meaning they left the religion. And he asked what was common with all seven of these. They were all schooled in Islamic schools, 100% Islamic schools. Additionally, he mentioned three Hufas from his community that led the rally. Three Hufas became agnostic and left the religion. And then another sister there, uh, Dr. Susie Ismail, very well known, quoted very recent research that shows the rates of suicide are twice as high in Muslim youth as opposed to all other religions. In Muslim youth. So just three data points to show you we need to focus on our youth, inshallah, moving forward. So very, very glad to have you focus on that. I, I just want to add a point, just to extend what you're talking about. Imagine now we have these issues that are happening and we're bickering about differences. You understand like how great of an issue this is when a youth leaves Islam. When it, we lose someone from our community, we, use, we lose the possibility of, of growing our community and growing our youth. And Allah is going to ask us about this kid. Allah is going to ask us about those hufad because he had the nur of Quran in his heart. And subhanAllah, when we see these issues, we start, if we really start to examine those communities that are developing those youth, we can find a number of issues in how leadership is, is operating and, and, and working with those children. Of course, parenting and family life is another factor, but subhanAllah, when we're united and we're working together on, on solving those youth issues, Allah Azzawajal is going to bless our future. I mean, we are getting very, very close to time. I will ask the volunteers, you can, you can feel free to start setting up uh, the food. And I think w what our panel has actually, in their talks, they've addressed some of the questions that I was going to ask as we were going along. Imam Jawad talked about how he sees the importance of unity and diversity. Imam Ali mentioned it. Um, Kari Faka mentioned it. So what I'll do is I will refrain from asking more questions now and just let, I'll open it for Q&A first. And if we don't have it, then I can continue to ask more questions. But you all are here, this program is for you. This is your opportunity. You have a, mashallah, wonderful panel. So let's open it up for Q&A. And please, anyone that has a question, raise their hand. And we'll give you a microphone, inshallah. I don't know if this can reach there. Maybe speak loudly. Brother Ahmed. The level of brotherhood here in this masjid is second to none. Yeah, alhamdulillah, we are very fortunate then to like more uh, fortunate masjid where the, mashallah, the money comes right and left with the level of brotherhood that reflects on volunteering and respect for our imams and the love that we, we do here is really second to none. 
now, like, given all that we are all from different backgrounds and we are all diverse and we all uh, do things differently and we see each other do things di differently and we're okay with this, you know, I can witness to that for 17 years, alhamdulillah, as an Arab in a Pakistani masjid, you know, like 17 years was a lot worse, now alhamdulillah is a lot better, you know, but alhamdulillah, يعني, we're very good that we cannot complain as a, a community. However, in terms of unity and diversity, with our Imams, we had different Imams from different backgrounds, being, you know, coming from Al-Qura, coming from Pakistan, coming from different backgrounds. And this is where I have a straightforward question to you. Should the Sheikh cater to the community or should the community cater to the Sheikh? Meaning, like if I come today and I say, and I come to you and say, this is Ruayat Salaf and Hamza, and this is absolutely legit, and I impose my opinion on you. Or I come there and say, you must say I mean out loud, because this is the Sunnah of Rasulullah, and anything else is wrong. Or, who's the idiot who said I mean after me? You know, like, all these things we heard, and you must have heard ten times more. The Imam comes with his own different background of, and, and he imposes his kind of uh, knowledge on the community where they could differ, they could have some kind of something in their heart and I wanted to hear from you that should we, uh, we all respect you but we should adhere to your sayings to us or should you kind of cater to us? Good question. See, there is no imposing on anyone. A good imam is one who doesn't force or fixate people on certain things. A good imam is one who is flexible, who, of course, the imam follows a certain school of thought and he'll be doing, praying that way. But that does not mean that he is imposing or impacting on the people that they should do the same way. If there is someone who can pray differently, and that's the diversity we have now, Imam Ali from Tunisia, you know, being a Maliki, and, and you know, me being from Pakistan, from Hanafi or Qadi or Fakas are here, so, or Sheikh Kamal for that matter. So that's the diversity that we're showing, that we have different shi'u from different backgrounds, and the community does not have to be uh, impacted or imposed upon in a certain way. Uh, the flexibility in the Imams should be enough that they have the leverage to adopt the different musallis that are there and, uh, and accommodate them. That's all. But there should not be that you stop someone from practicing what they have been practicing for so many years, inshallah. But can we stop the imam? Can we stop the imam? Can we stop the imam, please, for us? You know, like, this kind of recitation is kind of strange to us. Or you know, we do respect that saying, I mean, No, I mean, that's, not, that's disrespectful to say that to the Imam. We can't do that to the Imam. No. Question for you. Just to what is Riyasat Madina? How would you explain, describe Riyasat Madina? You want to repeat it? The question from the sisters is, what is Riyasat Madina, which means in Urdu, what is the state of Medina? And can you explain that? I mean, I think that terminology is very, very rampant in Pakistan these days because the ousted prime minister, the ex-prime minister who has been kicked out of the government, he's using that terminology a lot in Pakistan for the last three and a half years that he wants to build the Riyasat of Medina or the state of Medina. Basically what it means or refers to is the infrastructure that Rasulullah built in Medina. The society that Rasulullah built in Medina, he is referring to that. But of course that is a very holistic approach. He's using that for political advantage and politicizing that word. You know, the, the, the society in Medina was free from politics. The society of Medina was a society that Rasulullah built on brotherhood of khuwa, understanding and justice and fairness. Everybody's equal, nobody's above the law. And that is the values of the Medinan society that Rasulullah built. And that is what, you know, that ex-Prime Minister in Pakistan is referring to it towards that. Uh, and that's how he, it is coming into the terminology of the people in that, in that country.
Girls, girls always left back. You, you want to go first? Go repeat the question first. Yeah, so um, the brother was asking about, well, first and foremost, the, um, the, 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 the obvious obstacle for, for imams being male um, and, and programming for, for younger girls, like our, our, our daughters, in the masjid, and how best to go about um, programming for them and encouraging them to come to the masjid, and what kind of ideas um, uh, Imam Jawad and myself have um, to accommodate uh, for, for our daughters in the masjid. So, as as a as a father of a of, as a, as a father of a daughter myself, and yeah, um, of course, like this is something that we need to um, we a hundred percent have to focus on this. We often forget that you know when we go to work, who's raising our children? You know, uh, uh, who is around our children at home? For a lot of for a lot of traditional families, we have our wives at home who are taking care of our daughters. And even if our wives are working, there's still a woman around in that space who is giving um, Islamic education to our daughters. Uh, even when we take our daughters to Islamic school, the majority of teachers are Muslim Muslim women. Um, and you know, as myself, as as an educator working in an Islamic school, I was one of a very small group of men who were working there. So I was actually I had we had the opposite problem. We had it where it was like how can how can you men work with the boys right because the women couldn't work with the boys as much so we, obviously we have to um, maintain the rules of modesty in our faith and we need to make sure that we have from our community we develop sister leaders um, who can who can be a part of this um, this educational track for for our daughters and at the same time even that ta'ala when we do our youth programming we'll make sure that we have specific events for girls um, and uh, having experience with working on it in the past or at least organizing it I can tell you yani, alhamdulillah from our youth the girls are always the first to come to the masjid the boys are the ones that are harder to get to the masjid the girls love to come to the masjid and may Allah Azza wa preserve them and bless them and make them like Fatima Zahra and Sayyidah Zainab and Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu anha and our ummahat al mu'mineen may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and guide them and us as well See, one of the things for the sisters to do is uh, participate more in the masjid. No, masjid. no masjid is successful unless the sisters of the masjid are very active, very dynamic, very progressive. For girls to have, come, have programs in the masjid, we need mothers to come forward and step up and organize the programs, uh, supervise them. Yes, the imams are there in terms of education, in terms of you know, rapport and giving them ideas and managing them. But we need volunteers, we need mothers to come up and step up and provide programs. There are many other masajids, if you look around in New Jersey, where they have a very robust um, young girls, sisters program, is because there are mothers in that masjid who are very, very active, very proactive. I don't want to mention names of masajid, but you know very well there are a lot of Maasai in this local neighborhood and I know it's, it's very challenging because sisters are downstairs they cannot you know directly ask questions but if they are listening downstairs we as an imam over here both of us we are expecting a lot from the sisters of MCNJ community and inshallah we want the sisters come forward with ideas with programs that would be benefit for daughters of the society community and for the youth in general uh, so that we can have um, beneficial programs, activities for uh, both the boys and the girls of the masjid so that they feel participated and they feel engaged and involved in it, inshallah. But let me tell you one thing, that no imam can alone single-handedly do anything in a masjid. Imams don't have magical wand or magical stick that they just touch and boom, things will change. Imams need support. We need brothers and sisters to come forward to participate. If you look at most, the most active
respective masjid in New Jersey, ICBC. Just go there, take a visit, take a tour. ICBC is one of the largest masjid of New Jersey. Very robust, very dynamic, very progressive. Every day there's things happening. It's not just one Sheikh Qatanani doing it, or there was Sheikh Osama, the other Imam. It's because there's a huge build of volunteers over there. There are fathers, there are mothers who are coming forward in ICBC, always organizing program youth picnics, youth uh, uh, camping trips, youth programs, and they are there. Imam is there to cajole, to counsel, to guide, to mentor, to coach. The volunteers, the fathers and mothers, yes, do this program, do this, do that. But it's the volunteers that come forward. So if you want MCNJ to flourish, you have to step up. You can't just sit back and relax and fold hands and say, what are you doing, Imam, for our kids? Yes, Imam will do everything, but he's alone, he's one. We need support, you need more hands, more minds more legs to do that you know we need to have a lot of uh, activities for kids but we need volunteers fathers and mothers to come forward to support those activities to help those activities inshallah okay so we're running up on time we're going to finish by 9 45 those that don't have questions please feel free to start eating if you don't have a question please feel free to start eating Pardon? So, we will insha so inshallah that's an administration question we will deal with. So we have chosen, um, or I should say we have discussed uh, in the past that the person calling the azan has to have certain qualifications in terms of just, you know, a good voice and be reliable. And so there were selected members, as you all know, that have been serving for years that have, that have chosen that. Um, in Ramadan, it's a time where everybody feels more spiritual. Everybody wants to call azan. And everyone wants to get a chance at the microphone, so it's something that we'll have to discuss uh, and take that back, whether we, there's a wait and a process to open this up or to have a qualification process, but we can't have just anybody step up and take the microphone. So we had three people chosen, and that's, that's kind of what led to that, but we'll revisit it, inshallah. Was that No, and we lessons learned. We apologized um, that night for it, and we learned from it. And inshallah, we will we will learn from this moving forward. Last question, Nazam. Sorry, I don't think you can hear me. So I'm wake up. I'm standing between you and dinner. Okay, so. Um, for each of your question, I'm just answering three sentences, not three paragraphs, three sentences. You all have different experiences, all of you. So, looking at the amazing skill set and the amazing knowledge sitting in front of me, how are each of you going to impact the community in your role? Bring with your, your skills and your experience, in, just in three sentences, if you can just explain that very quickly. Is this his question clear? Okay, I'll just go ahead first. My skills is more of education, knowledge sharing, information sharing, oratory. I'm a speaker, I'm with Nash ICNA National, so I travel around the country speaking and educating different communities. So my goal would be to raise the bar here in terms of knowledge. There should be more classes, more programs, and I would ask all of you to participate in that. And we, inshallah, as we plan the, these classes and we announce them, we don't want, you know, Brother Amjad or someone else just announcing it here and nobody shows up. We don't want classes being announced and only two or three people sitting there. We want a whole classroom of 20, 25 people. This is your chance to learn knowledge. This is your chance to participate. That's one thing. The other thing is that through that knowledge, we need practice. We need to implement that knowledge in the masjid so that we grow as a community, inshallah. <laughs> so, uh, three sentences? 
you know, I was a liberal arts major in college, right? So it, it's going to take me more than three sentences. Um, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The first sentence is, I'm young, but I have experience. And so I think that um, oftentimes when you see a younger person in the masjid, wait, no, I'm over three sentences. Is, that, is this okay? Okay. Um, you, you often think that there's, uh, there's obviously room to grow, but we often kind of put this um, uh, judgment upon them that, that they don't know as much as I do, or they, they, they haven't experienced as much as I do. And we often forget that um, when, when we're trained to do a certain job for a certain amount of years, when we've um, sat and, and, and spent long nights studying and, and, and traveling and, and opening your eyes to different experiences and seeing different communities thrive and also um, a fail at certain endeavors, this builds a, a certain skill set in an individual. Like he starts to understand what it is that could work and what it is that won't work. And when you mix that a little bit with the second level, for me it's, uh, I, I, I do come from an education background, I kind of understand a little bit more about child psychology and a little bit more about what makes, what makes a child take that next step in their faith and take that next step in their development. And I think for, for us as a, as a community, where one of our goals is developing that next generation, and bi'ithnillah ta'ala, that will come helpful for that. The last bit is, because I'm young, I also know what cool things people want to do, right? And the cool places that people want to go to. So the hope is, is inshallah ta'ala, it's not just that we are, in addition to what we are doing in education, that this is also a community center, and that we have the opportunity to have youth kind of take them, take them out of the American environment that they're so used to in public schools or whatever, and, and kind of retool them for a, a, a healthy Islamic American environment that lets them be an American kid and enjoy those things in the halal and, and realize what it is outside, what they can do that is halal, and who they can do the halal with. And I think that that's important as well. میں قرآن کا ٹیچر ہوں اور ٹرائی یہ کریں گے کہ جو بچہ یا جو کلاس ہو اس کو بہترین طریقے سے پڑھائیں تاکہ وہ قرآن کے ساتھ لب کر سکیں اور لیٹر آن وہ قرآن کو سمجھ کر کے آگے قرآن کا دین کا ایمبسٹر بن سکیں یہ ہماری ٹرائی ہوگی You understand Urdu, come on, brother Nizar. <laughs> so, Sheikh was saying, Qari Sahib, in terms of his skill set, he's a Quran teacher, he has mastered his Quran, so he would teach the kids in Quran in the best way that they can recite the best recitation, so, and then in the future they are able to understand the Quran, what they're reciting, the meanings, and all of that, inshallah. So that is how he will bring to the table his expertise in terms of growing the kids in the community, inshallah. Okay, Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. For everyone. I'm going to ask Qari uh, Rafaq to do a small closing du'a, um, and then we will head to dinner, inshallah. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وادخلنا الجنة مع الابرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اله العالمين امار اس بخشنے کو قبول اور منظور فرما یا اللہ یا اللہ آپ اس میں اتفاق اور محبت عطا فرما یا اللہ تیرے حکم نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے طریقے کے مطابق زندگی بسر کرنے والا بنا یا اللہ ہم سب کو یا اللہ اپنے دین کا امبسٹر بنا ہمارے اولادوں کے دین کا امبسٹر بنا اپنے دین کا دعائی بنا ہمارے بچوں کو دین کا دعائی دعائی بنا اس, اس مرکز کو جتنے بھی مرکز ہیں یا اللہ دین کے مرکز بنا اور اس میں دین کا پھیلانے کا یا اللہ ذریعہ بنا جتنے بھی حضرات اس مرکز میں جہیں بھی جہاں بھی کام کر رہے ہیں اللہ ان کو ان کو یا اللہ استخامت عطا فرما ان کو اپنے مقربین میں شامل فرما الہ العالمین اس مرکز کو دن دگنی رات چگنی ترقی عطا فرما پنے پڑھانے والوں کو اخلاص و للائیت عطا فرما اس کو چلانے والوں کو اخلاص و للائیت عطا فرما یا اللہ یا اللہ یا اللہ ہمارے بیٹھ شاہوں کو قبول اور منظور فرما 
ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم صلى الله عليه I just forgot to mention, uh, my son is here, Hafiz Shaheer Chawad. Uh, he has done khutbah over here. I have two sons who are both Hafiz of Quran. They're both khatib. I have trained them, alhamdulillah, and they give khutbah in different masajid. They do taraweeh in different masajid. So they will also be helping me, assisting me here in this masjid. So this is what I told Brother Amjad and the, and the management, that it's buy one, get two free. So when I, when I come here, my sons come also with it, and they'll participate in many of the programs with the youth. Jazakallah khair, inshallah.